When we launched the first range of cryogen hooks back in 2016, there were six patterns which pretty much covered all the mainstream popular carp fishing methods at the time. The only anomaly was a long shank. Now the reason we didn't include a long shank in the original range was because previously we'd done a wrapped long shank hook based loosely on the sort of traditional B175 type shape and this was never all that popular. So when we formulated the cryogen range, a long shank wasn't really on our radar. Now over the last few years, obviously with the explosion in popularity of the Ronnie rig and us getting asked to introduce a long shank into the cryogen range, it made sense to start working on one. Now rather than just going down the route of doing another sort of traditional shaped long shank pattern, I thought it'd be a good idea to try and create a better Ronnie hook, but which would also make a very good bottom bait rig. So I made a rough sketch of what I had in mind, which was basically a cross between a long shank and a curved shank. We drew, um, drew the design up in-house on CAD, and over a period of time formulated a range of five sizes, tweaking the proportions and the dimensions until they looked just right. So a couple of months later, we got the first samples back from the manufacturer, which was just a size four. Now in terms of the, the shape and the proportions, the forging, everything else, the finish and wire gauge, they were spot on. And although they were sharp, we felt they could do with being a little bit sharper. So we went back to the drawing board, drew a slightly finer tapered point, changed the point to diameter ratio, sent the drawings back to the manufacturer, and another couple of months passed before another little box turned up containing more samples. Now this was a bit of a moment of truth, you know, sort of a little bit of a trepidation moment when you, you hope that everything's turned out all right. And um, I reached into the bag of samples and straight away, I think I drew blood, you know, I tried to pull a few hooks out and, and got pricked and it was like, oh, they feel sharp. Obviously I compared them with the previous samples which weren't quite sharp enough. And straight away I could see that the point was finer in profile and felt significantly sharper they really, really, you know, look the business. So we were really happy with these samples. Then of course, I wanted to tie some rigs up with them to see how they actually, you know, behaved on the end of a rig. Making up some Ronnie rigs and doing some tank tests and so on initially. The hook, you know, notably sits up in a sort of real upright, aggressive position, sort of like a bit of a sort of praying mantis type attitude, turned and spanning the hand, etc. And then with a bottom bait rig, which was, you know, another sort of, uh, stipulation it had to be a good bottom bait hook as well. Just tying some up with the tungsten loaded coated braid, no strip section, just knotless knotted direct to the hook, doing the sort of standard drawing the hook over the palm test like tensioning the hook link. The hook turns and pricks instantly even without a shrink tube or a kicker um, to try and turn it. It was just the, the attitude of the eye and the slightly subtle swept curved shank. They just turn and prick straight away in the hand. So we gave the manufacturer the green light to start production. And over the next month or so, we started receiving more sizes. Now I started sending these out to a range of anglers that I knew would give sort of genuine criticism, wouldn't pull any punches. And over the testing period through the spring and summer, there's been a hell of a lot of big fish caught on them. Um, I mean, the first guy I sent them to, a guy called Ross Bancroft, first fish he caught was a 27 pound scaly from a, a sort of completely untapped lake. And the next day he had a 41, again, completely unknown. Mad scraps in shallow water, both fish completely nailed. And he's, Ross is an ardent hook sharpener. You know, a few of the guys I sent them to are, or, you know, they used to sharpen everything they used previously. Whereas with the trig hammers, they haven't felt the need to sharpen them at all, which to me is a pretty good endorsement. Alfie Russell's been using them a lot as well this year, and he's been catching decent fish on them on pop-ups and bottom baits. Um, Spencer Butler, he's had some decent fish on them from Belgium especially. I think the first time he used them, he had a brace of commons. I think one was just over 40 and the other one was just under, and a mid-30 mirror. And he'd been using the same long shank pattern for years without changing it and now he's completely converted to the trig hammers, which you know, is, is a nice recommendation. The trig hammers are physically a big hook. They're you know, proportionally the same size as other long shank patterns on the market. So size for size, they are a big hook. And they also have, for a long shank, quite a wide gape, which has no doubt helped with the exceptional hook holds they achieve. 
but some people might think, oh, a long shank with wide gape, is that asking for trouble? But with the tempering process we use in manufacturer, it's given the, the steel just the optimum level of spring so that we haven't had any issues with them opening out or snapping during testing. We've had a lot of fun developing the trig hammers. They've caught a load of big fish and performed outstandingly well through the testing period. I'd go as far as to say I think we've created a better Ronnie hook and they're available in sizes 4, 5, 6, 7 and 8 barbed and barbless.